coming up, law enforcement in Yankton is hoping a reward will finally bring answers to a nearly 30-year-old cold case. Plus, we head back to the neighborhood in western South Dakota that's still dealing with a sinkhole almost a year later. Good morning, this is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. One man is dead after a Monday morning crash west of Leola. Around 3 o'clock, a semi was heading east on Highway 10 when the vehicle went off the road and rolled. The driver of the semi was taken to an Aberdeen hospital where he died as a result of his injuries. South Dakota's Highway Patrol is investigating the crash. The FBI hopes an updated picture of a South Dakota cold case victim inspires someone to come forward with new information on the decades-old case. Take a look. The picture on the left shows Tammy Haas before her 1992 death. Authorities say the picture on the right is a mock-up of what the Yankton teenager would have looked like on her 48th birthday. Authorities are also offering a $15,000 reward for information on Tammy's death. She went to a homecoming party in September 1992 and never came home. Days later, her body was found in Nebraska, not far from the party. She died of a neck injury. If you have information that could help with the investigation, contact Yankton Police or the FBI. An old gypsum mine that is now located right below a neighborhood in Blackhawk is causing some major issues. About a year ago, 12 homes were evacuated due to a mine collapse. Now, many other residents are worried their homes are next. An attorney representing some of the neighbors in the area says the state is responsible. Nobody really knows what part of the mine is going to collapse next. Um, it could be next month, it could be next week, but if you are going to have more holes in the neighborhood, it's, it's all collapsing. So, very dangerous situation, extremely dangerous situation out there. We reached out to attorneys hired by the state who say they will not comment on the pending litigation. Turning to weather now, snowflakes could be seen in the air in parts of Kelloland yesterday. Let's see if more could be seen today with meteorologist Scott Munt. Good morning, Scott. Well, good morning, you two. We could have a couple of flurries or light snow showers during the early morning hours in parts of eastern, southeastern Kelloland. By the afternoon, I think we'll have dry skies, but it will remain cold. Numbers well below average. So we are starting with a couple of flurries, light snow showers, mainly in eastern and southeastern Kelloland. Temperatures today probably in the 40s for afternoon highs. And then we're watching snow chances in western South Dakota for tomorrow. We have winter weather advisories out for the hills of western Kelloland. And Brian will talk more about that coming up in a couple of minutes. Thanks, Scott. You don't have to wait to get a COVID vaccine shot in Sioux Falls anymore. Sanford is now running a walk-in clinic at the Imaginetics building. The clinic is open to anyone without an appointment, and the whole process takes about 20 minutes. We've been doing this now since middle of December, and, you know, we really do have an efficient operation as we're doing, you know, uh, at least 12 vaccinations every five minutes. I just felt like I should get vaccinated. I think, you know, it would benefit everybody to help you know, stop the spread of COVID and we can, like he said, just get back to our normal lives. Okay. The clinic has distributed 80,000 vaccines so far. The walk-in clinic is open today and tomorrow from 8 to 5. Students at Dakota Wesleyan University will soon be finishing the school year. This last year, due to the pandemic, DWU took steps to help keep students and staff safe. Now the university is working to vaccinate the campus community. If we want to go back to the new normal, where maybe we don't have to have face coverings all the time, where we can get more people in class, we can start doing uh, group work, um, being able to do student activities, we then need to get people vaccinated. Staff and faculty will be receiving their second COVID-19 vaccine later this week. The university is making plans to offer a vaccination clinic to students in the future. Bikes are being distributed to kids in Sioux Falls thanks to a partnership between a foundation and the State Department of Corrections. The Promising Futures Fund helps 14 schools in the Sioux Falls School District with the highest rates of poverty. The foundation reached out to the DOC about its pedal power from the Penn program. Inmates at Mike Durfee State Prison refurbish unclaimed bikes. They're later distributed to programs and people in need. Promising Futures Fund and the DOC are working to distribute 150 bikes. Having a bike when you're a kid, especially a low-income kid, it means transportation to school, 
It means transportation to your friends, it's recreation, um, it's skills learning, um, but it's independence. On Tuesday, 18 bikes were dropped off at Annie Sullivan Elementary School in Sioux Falls. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, weather today, well, looking at future cast, a few breaks here and there in the cloud cover, especially southwest of Sioux Falls, a little bit better chance of that. We've seen some of those pockets of blue sky, so we're going to incorporate that into the forecast. But keep in mind our predominant wind is still out of the north, not as strong, but it still can lead to these cloud areas kind of filling back in. And then what we'll see tonight is generally kind of that same idea, a few patches of clearing here and there. And then tomorrow, a new system in the west will bring about a winter weather advisory for the Black Hills. So obviously the clouds will be thicker there. And then the, that area of snow will try to expand a little east, but it's probably going to run into a lot of trouble moving much past the Missouri River Valley I and mean, even into Friday. Uh, while areas of rain and snow will be common West River, I think Sioux Falls will have a low chance of seeing that and uh, likely getting into the weekend. This system will slide to the south. There's a recap of the advisory three to six inches of snow starting tomorrow into Friday morning for much of the Black Hills. So, you know, from getting some moisture out of this, uh, you know, we'll take it. It's going to be snow whether we like it or not. 47, our temperature today in Huron, 48 in Mitchell. That seven-day forecast, as we begin with tonight, we're down in the upper 20s and low 30s. And then I do think here temperatures for the weekend are a little better, 50-degree weather. Uh, we're all right with going with that, especially on Sunday. But the catch is another strong cold front. Monday, rain-snow combo, and temperatures will drop into the 40s and we may not be done cutting those highs. It's clearly going to be below normal early next week. Aberdeen is also going to be below normal. So take in that little bump in the temperature this weekend because the cycle of colder weather is going to continue. Pierre, good chance of at least some spots of rain and snow on Friday. I think then, too, by Monday, that next frontal boundary will change our weather. And also Rapid City looking at those changes in weather as we go into tomorrow and Friday and again by Monday of next week. Check out the details at keboland.com and have a great day.